Here's a bird that I've wanted to paint for a long time. This is a 7x10 inch transparent watercolor of a blue-headed vireo. These are one of my favorite birds. I kind of think of these guys as the teddy bears of the bird world. That enormous head with its great big eyes and perfect white eye ring is super cute. I did this transparent watercolor on hot pressed paper and I've already transferred the sketch and I've frisked it off the paper so I can start right in on the background. I wanted a soft, subtle wash in the background, so I pre-mixed all of my wash colors and then pre-wet my paper, making sure it was very evenly saturated with water. I washed in a gray-green color at the top and then used some water in the middle and then a pink-purple at the bottom, blotting off any extra pigment that might puddle and cause back runs. With a number four round brush, I suggested some branches in the background while the paper was still wet so they'd look blurry with soft edges. With that done, I hit the background with the hairdryer to lock in the colors. Then I put in some mid-ground branches with the number two round brush. I glazed in a little bit of shadows to the mid-ground branches, and I don't want a lot of information on these, just enough to suggest a bit of detail and depth. With the background in place, I removed my frisket and then transferred the sketch to the foreground element. My goal now is to cover all the white of the paper with my lightest local colors. My photos were actually pretty lousy. I shot them through our kitchen window on a gray fall day. And no matter where I moved with the camera, the bird was partially obscured by a branch. But between a few photos, I had enough information that I could get a good drawing of the bird. I did want to reinvent the lighting to something more interesting that would complement the colors of the bird's blue-gray head and its yellow-greenish body. And pink is a color I don't get to use very often, but it sure is fun to use when you get the chance. So I established the basic shading with some light pink like I had used at the top of the background. The pink was rose matter with a touch of dioxazine purple, and those pink tones should really work well against the blue-gray of the bird's head as well as the gray greens at the bottom. Those should help relate to the bird's back with its intense yellow greens. At least that was the plan. To bring in some of the other greens to the background, I washed in some light greens using a phthalo green and lemon yellow on the larger branches of the crab apple tree. And these would suggest some lichens and algae growth on the bark. Almost all the rest of this painting was done with the same number two round brush with a zillion light glazes of color. And all those overlapping layers should end up making a lot of convincing textures. Unfortunately, I did have a recording failure for about an hour in here as I was building up textures on the bird and the branches with glazes. So you may see a skip in the progress. For a few of the closest branches, I brought in a little bit of chrome orange and alizarin crimson to pop those forward a bit. I wanted to keep the contrast and saturation lessened as I moved from the foreground into the background. I had to be careful with that thicker branch on the right. If that got too dark and saturated with color, it was gonna suck your eye right off the edge of the painting.
as I do the branches, rather than pre-planning every last bump and crease, I kind of shoot in a few layers of glazing and see what the paint does on the page and then respond to those overlapping washes and add some sculpting to the lumpy shapes that start to emerge. And in the end, it looks pretty three-dimensional. Often in background branches, less is more. You can just add a few layers of color to suggest things and let the viewer's eye fill in all those details. Blue-headed vireos have a lot of pretty colors on them. They're really more of a blue-gray headed vireo than just blue. And for the greenish yellows, I used a lot of different colors. First, I washed in some lemon yellow as a base. And for the bird's back, I started bringing in some glazing of phthalo green with cadmium yellow medium and some cadmium red to desaturate it a bit. At other times, I mixed in some chrome orange. As it moves to the feathers under the wing, I was bringing in glazes of lemon yellow and cadmium yellow medium and some streaking with chrome orange. Shadows on the bird were brought in using dioxazine purple, rose matter, and some phthalo blue. I tend to ease in on contrast when doing paintings. I save the darkest elements for last. With transparent watercolor, if you get dark too quickly, there's a tendency to have those dark and more opaque colors lift and smudge if you glaze over them. By saving those dark colors for last, the paint's gonna stay in place and won't get muddy. You can control the centers of interest using contrast, saturation of color, and the amount of detail. Areas of maximum contrast tend to really grab the viewer's eye. A great example of this is Winslow Homer's paintings. If you look at his work, you'll see how he used contrast, saturation, and sparks of white, red, and other saturated colors to grab your eye in his paintings. In this painting, the bird's head is naturally very contrasty, and I needed to have other elements with contrast to move your eye around the page a bit. The branches were pretty much my only opportunity for this, so I selectively added contrast, saturation, and detail to foreground elements so it wasn't too bird heavy. I was trying pretty hard not to overwork this painting and to leave a lot of elements as suggestions of shapes fading in the background. I decided it was time to stop before I killed all of its charm with too much detail. 
Between having a really cute Vireo to paint and that fun pinkish purple palette to play with, this was a really fun painting to work on. Thanks for taking the time to watch the Vireo watercolor take shape. I hope all of you get the chance to do some painting soon.